Hi, welcome to Daily Victory. I'm Pastor Laurie Itahosa, and I'm excited to be your host today for Daily Victory. This has been a phenomenal 2024. We are growing in grace. We're growing in wisdom. We're growing in strength. We're growing in our knowledge of the Word of God and our application of the Word of God. And Daily Victory is a place that you can be sure you can come to us every single day, except for Sundays, and you will find a place where you're getting a rich reservoir of the Word of God, a place to grow and a place to feed yourself. You know, many of us just let our spiritual life Leave it for Sunday mornings. But those of you that are here with us on Daily Victory, you are intentional about your spiritual life and about your spiritual growth. And we honor and appreciate you for that. And God is going to bless you for your faithfulness of being a part of our Daily Victory. So God bless you. I'm happy to see you today. Please share this broadcast on all of your different social media channels so that your friends and your family can grow together along with you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that the entrance of your word brings light and life and gives understanding to our simplicity. And today, Father God, we come to you with a heart of expectation. We come to you receiving wisdom from the throne of God. We come to you knowing that your voice is the guiding light of our life. And we will walk in your divine will and plan in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. So today, you know, this whole month we're talking about vision and how we're running with the vision. And I know that you've been able to uh, put some flesh to some of the things that you've been uh, thinking about doing. You've been able to write down some visions. You've been able to start applying some of the things that God has spoken to you to do or the things that you know you ought to do. But I want to talk today about when the vision doesn't happen. Uh, you know, God is an amazing God. He's a God that knows the end from the beginning. He is a God that plans all the days of our life and times and seasons are in his hands. And we can say, well, I'm going to do A, B, C, D this year. But God may not have that particular thing in line for you this year. He might have something else. And you might be starting to get frustrated saying, but this is my vision. This is my plan. How come it's not happening? Trust me, it's happening. But it might be happening in a slower pace. Or God might be helping you build the foundation so that when the thing that you're praying for manifests, you're able to sustain that thing that you've attained. Nobody wants to build a house and have their house crumble. Nobody wants to build a marriage and have their marriage fall apart. Nobody wants to get to a point of great financial increase and then be filing for bankruptcy the next month. God wants us to be able to sustain whatever it is that we attain. And so we have to look at the times and seasons and look at how God is working with us with this particular vision that we're asking God for. Maybe you're asking God for increase in your business and God's saying, look, work on your leadership structure, work on your financial uh, plan, work on your, your policies and your procedures. Because when I give you that increase in your business, I don't want it to, to slide out into areas of, of just not being able to move forward. I want it to be able to grow. And all the growth that I give you, I want it to be sustained and retained. And so when you have a vision, you can also look at the foundation of the thing that you're trusting God and believing God for. And you can work on that foundation. I know that there was a, a season early in my marriage that I was believing God for children. And every year I would pray, you know, Father God, let this be the year that I have a child. Let this be the year that, I'm, that I become a mother. And it delayed and it delayed and it delayed. And I was getting so frustrated because I felt like, God, why are you delaying my marriage? Why are, why, why are you delaying my, my giving birth? Why are you delaying my opportunity to become a mother? But during those years that there was delay, we didn't have our first child. We, were, we got married in 2002. We had our first child in 2007. Um, that child passed away. And then we had our, our, our oldest son now, Feb Jr., in 2008. And then we had two other children after that. But during that season between 2002 and 2007, when I was crying and praying and believing and writing down the vision, God was doing a great work on the inside of me. And he was doing a great work on the inside of my marriage. You know, I didn't know the stress that having children was going to put on a home. I didn't know the stress that having a children was going to put on my marriage, especially living in, a, in another country in a cross-cultural environment. I'm married to a Nigerian. And so we were living in Nigeria at the time. And so I had no idea that 
the, the pressures and the stress and the responsibilities and, and everything that having a baby was going to bring to my life. And so what God did for me between that 2002 and 2007 is that he gave me the capacity to become an excellent mother. He gave me the capacity to love my husband and to support my husband and to be a contributor to our home, despite the fact that I had this added responsibility of being a mother. He gave me the capacity to love my child. I mean, when I started having children, oh my Lord, did I love those babies. I mean, I love them with, I mean, I prayed for them. They were my miracle babies. They still are my miracle babies, although they're like taller than me now, but they're my miracle babies. And so when they came, the way that I nurtured them, the way that I cared for them was different than the way I would have nurtured and cared for them had they just come easily. The same thing with many of us. If you're believing God for a marriage, you're saying, you know, God, I want to get married this year. And this year passes and next year passes and the year after. And you're saying, but God, I asked you for a husband or I asked you for a wife and I'm getting up in age. But then by the time you do receive that vision, the way that you love that spouse, the way that you nurture that marriage, the way that you care for that home will be different than if you had gotten it immediately. So don't be frustrated when things don't come to you suddenly, because the vision, according to Habakkuk chapter two, verse, verse three. Well, have, let's read Habakkuk two, two, and then we'll go to two, three. It says, the Lord answered me and he said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables so that he may run who reads it. Then verse three says, for the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Now, this sounds like it's all over the place. It's like, the vision is going to come. It's not going to delay. It's not going to lie. It might seem slow. Wait for it. But we're writing our visions because we're expecting instant results. No, we're writing our vision so that we can have, like we've shared in previous broadcasts, we can have our vision constrain us. We can have our vision create the guardrails that we need, create the character that we need, work on our value system, work on our daily habits, work on all the things that are going to be necessary so that when we receive that gift from God, when we receive that vision, we're going to say, wow, this is such a blessing and you receive it and you're able to keep it. Amen. So the vision might wait, it might not come immediately, but while you're waiting for the vision, what are you doing? You're working on the skills, you're working on the habits that will help you to sustain that vision once it comes to pass. It also puts you on a pathway to receive that vision. Now, let me share a little bit about that, um, especially if you're believing God for a spouse, you're believing God to get married, okay? While you're waiting for that vision, what are you doing? You're, you're starting to define what it is and what type of a spouse you need. Now, if you don't have a vision for the kind of spouse you need, then any guy or any girl is gonna, is gonna be okay. Anybody that shows you attention or gives you affection or tells you I love you, suddenly like, okay, great, let's get married. <laughs> but when you have a vision and you say, God, this is the vision for the home that I wanna have. I wanna have a home that is, is founded on the word of God. I wanna have a home that respects one another, that has mutual kindness. I wanna have a home that there's love in my house, there's good communication in my house. I wanna have a home where my husband, if you're a woman, where my husband leads me in the, the way of faith, where my husband teaches me and, and, and helps me grow in my walk with you. And you start having these, these things that you're saying that God, it, it, you're starting to define the vision as you're, as you're praying for the vision. As you've written it down, you start to define it. And as you define it, the more that you define it, the more it creates guardrails to say, ah, well, if I want a husband who's going to lead me spiritually, I can't find him in the nightclub. I've got to be in the church. I've got to be in an environment where I'm going to find somebody who can lead me spiritually. Oh, if I want a, a home that is financially stable, then I need to make sure that I marry somebody that has a job and that doesn't have a, a low credit score and that, that, you know, whatever it is, like suddenly you just, you just start defining things. I'm not saying that you um, start disqualifying everybody and become like this, you know, perfect out of reach person, but you do have this, uh, this defining uh, season where everything that you're praying for now becomes defined and you're beginning to say, okay, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to put this in. And as you define it, that vision starts to constrain you. Like it says in, in Habakkuk chapter two, verse three, it says, 
for still the vision waits for its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It won't lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. In other words, it's not slow. It's coming exactly when God has you ready to receive it. It's coming exactly when you've allowed yourself to put up the proper guardrails so that you can sustain whatever it is that you attain. So the vision is not the problem. We sometimes and our habits and our mentalities and our values can be the challenge. And we have to go back and say, God, work on me. I receive your grace to, to have better values and to do things that are in alignment with the direction that you're calling me to have. All right. So that's a kind of a hard topic because the responsibility comes back to us. But that's what the word does. The word cuts us. The word sh is, is, a, is a force that helps to form us more into the image of God. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, I want to encourage you. We got a lot to talk about on this topic. So I want to encourage you to join us on a phone call right after today's broadcast. And that's in the U.S. You can call us on 302 561-6767. Or if you're calling from Canada, you can call us on 709-500-6767. And I want us to continue uh, talking on this topic on our phone call after the broadcast. Also, I want to encourage you to donate, to give to the Lord. This is your first fruit season. This is the season where you're beginning something new. Be generous towards the Lord. Every opportunity you have, be generous towards God. Every opportunity you have, you give and you give with an open and a willing heart, knowing that God loves a cheerful giver. So this is another opportunity for you to give and you can text the word donate to 302-324-5400 or you can give right here on our Victory Experience app or our Jesus Experience app or on victoryexperience.com. All right. Thank you so much for being with us today. If you're watching this as a replay or you're watching this on your, your Facebook page, share it to your page, share it to friends, share it to family members. We want people to be able to hear this word together with you. So please make sure that you share it on your social media. We love you. We celebrate you. Have a great day. And we will see you tomorrow here on Daily Victory. Hi, I'm Pastor Laurie Itahosa. It's great to see you today. And I'm excited to tell you about what's happening on January 20th. I want you to get out your calendar, get out your phone, wherever you save important dates. And I want you to put down January 20th. On January 20th, I'm going to be leading the New Beginnings Breakfast this year, and I need you to come support me, okay? My dad has done this for the last 40 years. It has always been Pastor Gary Whetstone's New Beginnings Breakfast, and he's entrusting me to lead the New Beginnings Breakfast. I'm kind of excited about it because for me, that's a big sign of trust coming from our founding pastor. And not just that, but God has put a word in my spirit that I believe is going to transform your life. This is our year that we're running with the vision. And we're going to be talking very clearly and specifically about how to run with the vision in different areas of your life. We're going to be taking some very detailed time and, and working our understanding of vision, working our understanding of dreams and of goals and of direction and of focus. And I'm excited about sharing this season with you because I believe that January 20th is going to change your life. I believe that January 20th is going to set you on a trajectory where you are not going to fail in the things that God has called you to do. So listen up. We're going to be there January 20th, 8 o'clock starts our breakfast, and then 9 o'clock starts the meeting proper. Now, we're probably going to start praise and worship sometime around 845. So come on out at 8 o'clock, fellowship with us, have some free food. But then by 9 o'clock, we're going to get deep into the word of God. And it is going to be life transforming. So be with us, be with me on January 20th. And I encourage you that this year's New Beginnings Breakfast is for you. It's for your children. It's for your teenagers. It's for your family. It's going to be relatable. It's going to be understandable. And it's going to be something where you can easily implement what we're teaching into your daily life. So we'll see you on January 20th. Mark that in your calendar, 8 o'clock. And I will see you there. God bless you. I love you.